Hi, everyone. Best Bear Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. Today is Friday, April 15th, and we are continuing our coverage of the NHL playoffs with uh, SBR contributing hockey handicapper Dana Lane, who's given us a lot of great calls so far on the playoffs. And uh, Dana, the first game that I want to discuss is Detroit at Tampa Bay. Now, you uh, you had the over in that one, and that was in, in game one, and that was looking like it was going to be an easy over. Wound up being a push, though. They only went to five, but here we are with game two. And uh, right now, the five, the over five is just plus 100 to uh, minus 110 market wide, so not big odds there at all. Uh, if we see roughly the same things that we saw in game one, maybe the, uh, the over five in game two will once again be a good bet. What do you think, Dana Lane? Well, you're right, Pete. I mean, we thought that this game was going to be an easy over considering it was two to two midway through the second period. And of course, we knew that they were going to score at least one more goal. So our hope was that they would score uh, one goal in regulation with enough time at the end uh, to hopefully get that empty netter. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't work out like that. But we're going to go back to the well again tonight. I think there's going to be a, a definite uh, emphasis on getting Zetterberg more uh, more involved offensively. We've seen uh, his his uh, line mates and and Applicator, and we've seen uh, Datsuk have uh, terrific offensive games. But uh, unfortunately, Zetterberg has not been part of that. And I think there's going to be more of an effort to be to make that line a little bit more well rounded. I also think you're going to see uh, Dylan Larkin get more involved. And let's also watch. You know, Dylan Larkin a little bit because here's a rookie that now has experienced the NHL playoffs for the very first time. Let's see how he responds to that. But, Pete, you know that we've been doing videos long enough where I'm just not a fan of Detroit. I'm not a fan of them defensively. And I think one of these games are going to go way over the total, and this could be the one. Okay, well, I mean, you know, they did have the lead in the second period in the first game, and that you know they got 36 shots on goal, and now they're getting plus 140 in uh, in game two here. So uh, you're still not a believer in Detroit having value at that line. I think there's definite value in taking Detroit. I don't think there's going to be a sweep in this series, so you may want to take a look at Detroit tonight, uh, probably playing their best hockey because obviously they don't want to go down two games to none. So certainly it's worth a shot. Um, I don't like it as much as I like the over in this game, but certainly if we had to pick a side, Detroit's going to get one of these plus money games. So tonight might be that play, but uh, certainly we're focused more on the over, uh, but a side play perhaps on Detroit tonight. All right, then the second game tonight is the Islanders and Florida. And, of course, this is a back-to-back. -back. The Islanders won game one, which uh, took both of us a little bit by surprise. I don't know if we were expecting a sweep by Florida, but uh, neither one of us was really expecting Florida to lose game one. Feels like a big bounce-back spot for Florida here, right back on a back-to-back. -back. The line right now is about minus 150, though, market-wide, so that's a pretty healthy line. Uh, you know, Tavares had a great game for the Islanders. Is that repeatable here on a back-to-back? -back? Maybe it is. Uh, my sense is that uh, maybe we'll see another a relatively high scoring game. I'm leaning over minus 135 or 140 right now and also thinking about the Florida team total over. Would I take Florida on the money line at minus 150? I'm not exactly sure but uh, what's your take on this game too? Surprise win by the Islanders uh, in game one. Yeah, Pete, definitely a surprise to me, although again, we didn't think that this was going to be a sweep and, and these two teams are do match up well. Uh, they weren't that far apart in the overall point standings. Uh, so we didn't expect this to be a, a pushover for the Panthers, but uh, with me expecting the Panthers to go far in the playoffs, certainly we hope to see a better effort tonight. And this is what I'm going to do in this game. I'm going to go one and a half under in the first period, and then we're going to go over in the game. And so what we're going to try to do is catch both of these plays. And even if the first period play does not come through, then you're in real good shape to get your money back at the end uh, with the over. Yes, there's a risk to lose both, but that's certainly uh, I think there's more of a uh, opportunity here than the, that there is a risk. So we're going to go one and a half under as the public has certainly gone and, and bet this game. Uh, over and it, it's priced pretty high over ne never really during the regular season do you see uh, prices in the 140s uh, uh, on the total but I think these teams are going to come out defensive minded I think they're going to be a little tighter than they were in game one and, and 72 shots in game one I, I don't expect that to be a, at least the way the game starts out uh, but uh, you know Florida to me if you watch this game Pete uh, they they were the better team. I mean, obviously, 
Uh, Grice had a, a fantastic game, and he's on a great run. He's he saved 69 out of the last 77 shots. But uh, I think a few of those shots are going to go in as the game goes on. But we are going to we feel very comfortable with the with the one and a half under in the first period, and then the game to go over, and hopefully we'll catch both spots. Okay, interesting analysis there, Dana Lane. And then let's move on to game two in Chicago, St. Louis. That was your uh, your best call of the entire playoff so far. You like the under in game one, and that one, of course, cashed easily. The game was one zip in overtime. Uh, I, you know, said that I liked St. Louis in that one. They did pull out the win, although maybe uh, it was a little bit too close for comfort as a favorite. And now, of course, uh, tonight, uh, Chicago gets, uh, gets Duncan Keith back, so that factors in. The line right now is about uh, minus 110 to 115 market-wide for St. Louis, and and about plus 100 to plus 104 or so for uh, for Chicago. And the total, if we want to take the under, once again, five minus 110 is uh, is available. What do you think? Another, uh, you know, another no-brainer under here in St. Louis-Chicago game two? Yeah, how can you not go under, Pete? I mean, they it's in the last 125 minutes against the St. Louis Blues, Chicago has not allowed a goal in regulation to the Blues. So if we look at Brian Elliott and, and, and Crawford, those are certainly two goaltenders that scream unders. Um, the St. Louis Blues came out extremely physical. But before you think St. Louis has a huge advantage and they're you know, hitting everything in sight, keep in mind Chicago's puck possession uh, allows St. Louis to have more hits uh, on, on a nightly basis. I mean, Chicago really... Uh, to me, as the game went on, at least, I thought that they were they got stronger. And I think we're going to see that in this game. But uh, certainly we're going to go with the under in this situation until I can see I can see where both of those, these teams can beat two of the best goaltenders in the National Hockey League, especially uh, Pete as well. You know, Chicago looked completely committed to blocking shots. They had 21 block shots in game one. So the, we factor in the block shots with, with Crawford being on the back end and Elliott having one of the greatest runs of the season. Uh, I, I don't see any reason to go uh, with the over, although uh, the betting public does like the over for some reason. Okay, yeah, I think I might tell that one. I'm liking uh, the under after what we saw in game one as well, and maybe also shot with the first period under. And then let's move on to a Nashville-Anaheim game one in that series. And this is an interesting one. Uh, Anaheim is a pretty solid favorite right now, about minus 150 to 160 market-wide, and uh, Nashville about plus 140, up to plus 145. And uh, there's a lot to like about Nashville, right? The only question mark, I guess, is Pekka Rene. He had a very up-and-down season. Uh, at times, he was awesome, looking like the Rene of old at times. He really uh, had some issues and had like a 90% uh, save percentage, which is which is obviously not very good. And then Anaheim changed the style of play very effectively. They became a very strong defense-oriented team, and that was very effective for them in the one-loss column. They don't score a lot, though, and uh, the total is kind of interesting. I'm thinking that maybe a shot with the under at five at about plus 100 market-wide might have some value, and also, why not take a shot with uh, with Nashville as such a big underdog? You know, if Renee comes in and, and suddenly uh, is playing in top form, that's definitely going to be a, a play with value at uh, plus 145 that the Greek can get. What do you think about that? Lean towards Nashville as a big underdog and the under at uh, even money. I'm with you on both of those, Pete. I, I love the under getting some, maybe in some spots you're getting some plus money. You're certainly getting some plus money with Nashville. And again, if you watched our videos, I've never been a huge believer of Anaheim. Even in late into the season was the first time I put them in my top 10. And just simply, simply because I've seen them lose late season games to teams that they had no business losing to. They were lost as huge favorites against Winnipeg. They've lost as huge favorites against Vancouver as the season worn down. And I just have never been a believer in this team, no matter how many people continuously jump on their bandwagon. There is some injury concerns for the Ducks. David Perron might be available, but even if he does play, here's uh, somebody that has not played since the, the 20th of March. Um, he's great in open space, but again, I, I need to see uh, his his kind of his, what what has happened since the injury because a lot of times people react because names come back, but they don't know at what percentage they go they come back at. So let's not just jump on a specific specific team because we're getting quality players back until we know 100% that they are 100% because a lot of the, a lot of times they rush these guys back because it's the playoffs and they're playing at 60 70%. Also looks like uh, Raquel will also 
try to play. He's a great two-way player, but again, let me see him on the ice uh, coming back from his injury. He's a game-time decision, so it's not 100% that he will play. Hey, look, defensively, the Ducks are, are, are third in five-on-five situations and goals allowed this season, and Nashville is not that bad. They're right in the middle of the pack, but good enough where I'd like the under in this at plus money. Gibson's save percentage is not exactly where I would like it to be. It's a little bit low, but that's okay because we know that the Ducks' main concern is is making sure he faces a minimum amount of shots. So we're going to go under in this first game, and Pete, I love taking a chance with the Nashville Predators that they can steal one of these first two games at plus money. All right, Dana Lane, thanks for your awesome thoughts. As always, I'm feeling pretty good about uh, our picks on this four-game card. We'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday games. Talk to you then, Dana.